Welcome to another beer time with me, James Kelly. This time I've gone for a India Pale Lager, switched up from the IPA for a lager, but mainly because this can design. Look how sexy that can is. I'm probably gonna regret drinking this because it is now five past midnight. What a stupid time to record this and basically down this pint, but let's go for it. So, oh. I needed that. Oh, it, it, that's nice. It tastes like an IPA. I recommend. From Aldi, they've got a couple of these. One is a yellow with a rattlesnake on it. This one's the elephant one. Can't wait to try the other one. This last couple of weeks, as you may have seen, I've been experimenting quite a bit with teleportation. And don't worry, I'm not going to do any more. Or am I? Uh, but probably not. But if you haven't checked out the film that I created or the tutorial, there'll be linked at the end of the film and uh, maybe in one of the cards at the top of the screen now you can view if you want to uh, but definitely check them out it's definitely a short film that i'm quite proud of and uh, it was a bit a lot of fun to create um, now it was fun up until the point of the day of the last day of recording mm. now if you know canon lenses you'll know that this this 35 millimeter it's not even that cheap so when this happened i had quite a few swear words said uh, in my head at first because there was a member of public there and he said "Ooh, is your camera okay and i just packed it up quickly kind of ignored him went home shouted a lot out the window on the way home uh, but the main reason why i was scared was because i had lots of client work shoots coming up and this bit was still stuck to the camera and I was scared that this would be bent onto the actual camera mount. Managed to get it off luckily, and I have now put my insurance claim in, so I'll do a follow-up video to see if insurance actually works, because it's supposed to cover any accidents like this, and um, yeah, I don't like the fact that this lens is out of action. I, I, it's my main YouTube lens, for example. Luckily for a lot of the work stuff I do, I get by with other lenses but this one is just my baby <laughs> mm. but I was able to actually finish recording because this was this happened like first the first shot of the last day and I still have lots to record and so all the scenes in the forest and all the scenes at uh, the beginning and the end I was able to film with just my 50 millimeter this little guy, this cheap as chips, 79 pound lens. And I'll be honest, the results are really good. This is a 10th of the cost of that other lens. If not, nope. What's even more than a 10th? That's like a, it's like a 13th of the cost of this lens. So as you know, it's, it's an expensive lens and it just goes to show that the cheap gear, especially for film work, YouTube work, and when you've got an uh, ND filter on, it softens it anyway, you can get by quite well with cheap lenses. So definitely going forward, it hasn't got to be the best gear. Old vintage lenses might be something to look into for the future stuff, because I like, I actually do like the soft look. I turn down my sharpness on the camera all the way to zero, uh, the contrast all the way to zero, and I don't even actually add much sharpness in post because I feel like the softer the image, the the more uh, flattering it is. It's just my take. Um, hmm. So that was my lens disaster. And um, yeah, I've had a couple of people, uh, uh, having watched the final film, ask how, oh, can you show a breakdown a bit more? So let's, uh, let's get my laptop open, open Premiere, and actually go through one of the scenes uh, that we can just break down quickly. The one of me and my my son Isaac. Let's go for that. Um, so if we play it back, just the first shot is me picking up Isaac, and then it we jump. Then what happens is a couple of pulses, and that's just by doing some keyframes in and out of a blank slate. It transfers to a blank scene, and that just punches in and out. And on top of that, I've got a nested sequence. 
which is a lens flare. If I play that back, you see what happens. It kind of, it's squashed to start with, and then it opens up. And then within there, there's actually two lens flares. Oh, no, it's not. My mistake. You're gonna do this lens flare thing uh, and distort it and have it over layers. You need to have it on a black base layer. So put a solid black layer down, then put your lens flare on a top of that, nest that, and then you end up with your nested sequence, which you can then put on screen mode to get rid of the black. So I put that lens flare right there on just as the action happens, and it's on linear dodge. It seems to work better than screen, and it's only at 39% because it I wanted it to be just a very subtle pss, flash of light. So then when that's happened, I've gone, and then we go to oh, and then you can see there's some plantage blowing. Plantage, good word. <laughs> but let's have a look at that. If I break down that scene, that's just the blowing of the plant. But if we actually look and we turn off the bottom layer, it's masked. And if I turn off the mask, oh look, there's me blowing the plant. Play that back. That's all it is. Human breath. <laughs> So when we mask that, nest it, blend it with the original, it ends up looking part of a scene. Easy. And then we get to the next transition, which we then obviously are in the bedroom. We've got a clean slate of the bed. Yes, it was a clean bed. And then as soon as we start landing, the bed's messy because it wasn't the first take that I did. But within that amount of time, you don't notice at all that the bed's got messier. And it's only on the screen for a couple of frames. And then we land with, again with the pulse happening. So each time I enter the scene or leave the scene, I put a couple of keyframes. So say you've say you clipped at 100% scale, I then do a one frame as the action happens at like 105%. Then we go back to 100. Then one frame later at 103. Then one frame back to 100. And then one frame later at 101. So it's almost a ripple effect of boom, boom, shockwaves. I'll do it on screen now. <laughs> and that is it, high five, yeah. Uh, is that enough? Is that enough to show kind of what I do? If, if that's not enough, you need to watch the first video on camera position, uh, setting your focus and that sort of thing and extra elements you can add like a hat falling or leaves blowing. That kind of gives a more in-depth look at how you go about setting up one of these shots. That was just a quick breakdown inside Premiere of how I build the shot. So why do I like that film so much? If you're part of Epidemic, you'll know what I mean. Epidemic sound, that is. Um, everyone, everyone's got their top like 10 songs or artists. And if it's on the trending page as well, it's likely to be used by one of the big creators. And then you almost feel like you're copying it use the same song so I'm trying now to kind of go a bit more back to my roots and this song it was kind of exactly how how I am like my skating background when I was back in a band little pop punk band my favorite band is Blink 182 and having a bit of almost punky music made the film for me because it was a bit more a breath of fresh air to get back to what I love. I want you to be able to see my personality come forward and I think this film actually did that. Like, I had a good time making it. Uh, the music was my style. There's a little bit of humour in there which is definitely what I'm about. But yeah, I like to show my personality and the more and more subscribers I get, welcome if you're new, but the more and more I get, I want you to know me as a person. So I want I want you to have a relationship with me. A long-term relationship, please. Although I am married, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, also, what's been good about the, doing this film is I've actually made some new connections, even like met up with someone and had some drinks, and I love the fact that you can create something like this from, from scratch, and it's actually, for me, this has got a better chance of leading to, uh, of leading to better a better future for work and stuff um, because the person has seen my skill set and they've seen what I can do, they've seen my personality. It's almost like my uh, my CV live action. Yeah. Um, and it's just great to make new friends within the industry and 
contacts on YouTube and Facebook groups. So thank you for messaging and thank you for giving positive feedback on my, my videos and what I'm doing with the channel. It, it definitely means a lot. Um, and I love it. And I, I want to help out others as well where I can. So feel free to shout me any questions. I technical side or thumbnail side. I kind of, I quite like doing my thumbnails quite a lot. And speaking of which, I I actually really like the thumbnail of that film as well. And amazingly, let's just get to the scene now. This scene was lit entirely by my light above the cooker and this light just to the side. And because it had that contrast of like orangey light and that light, it worked really well for like that kind of mad mad scientist vibe that I was going for. I was really happy with the fact that 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 turned out how it did, considering there was no lighting apart from that and a kitchen cooker light. Cut a bit of gel, blue gel, put that on, and uh, set it to the most tungsten setting it's got, 3200, and you got a nice like teal colour, rather than blue, it's a nice teal, it's a little tip there as well. I'm all about the tips, you see. <laughs> I'm a tip sort of guy. <sighs> mm. Eventually, I plan to do this on live on YouTube, but I haven't even looked into setting up my camera um, and doing it, and plus, I, I hate the idea that no one will watch at first, so at least this way, I don't mind if no one watches because uh, I can I can walk away and come back later. Check out my short film. Send me some questions in the comments, and I'll see you on the next video. Uh, thank you for watching and supporting. Bye for now. Shall I teleport? Shall I? One last time.